All right, guys, we are back in my garage for another video. And today we are going to be talking about 200 treadwear tires. Obviously, this category of tire is extremely competitive because 200 treadwear is a limitation for a lot of different classes of racing and things like that. But even for people like me that just do mixed street and track driving, it's an extremely capable tire that gives you good longevity, good grip, good handling characteristics with minimal downsides as long as you kind of plan out how you're going to be using your car. So in this video, we're going to be comparing three of the ones that I've ran, the Bridgestone RE71 RS, the Hankook RS4, and the relatively new Continental Extreme Contact Force. So hopefully this answers any questions that you guys might have in case you're planning on buying one of these tires and you just need help making that decision. And hopefully you guys find this video useful. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. Now first, let me give you a little bit of background on how I use my cars. So I have two cars that I run these tires on, my 340i and my 440i. My 440i is mostly a street car. It makes around 600 horsepower, and I do some roll racing and things like that with it. But generally, it's mostly just for cruising, going to car meets and hanging out. I drive it to work as well, and I try to drive it as much as I can when the weather is you know, on my side. Now with that in mind, I'm looking for something that gives me a good amount of grip, something that can handle the torque my car is putting down and something that still gives me good driving characteristics when I try to, you know, go drive back roads with friends and things like that. Now my 340i is more of a daily driver. I drive it year round in all different types of weather conditions, but I also actually take it to road courses. So I've gone to the track with it and I want to make sure that I have a good tire that can handle all the extra heat and take the beating it's going to be going through over multiple 20 minute sessions for a weekend. So all of that is really important for me. I just need a tire that can handle the abuse without getting too greasy or just falling apart. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the tires we're talking about. The first one we'll look at is the RS4. I think this kind of follows just the default design style that a lot of tires in this category run. It has that thick strip of rubber down the middle to help give you good handling and good amount of grip, but it also has sipes that run from the middle all the way to the shoulder of the tire. So if you ever run into any wet conditions or any standing water, then it can effectively you know, evacuate all that moisture and keep the tire in contact with the ground. So tried and true kind of design, something that we know works well and kind of we just assume a lot of tires will look like this. The next one we'll look at is the RE71 RS and this one is actually very different even compared to the original RE71R. This one now has no sipes going to the edge at all. I think it does not have a single you know cut that goes through any of these four bands that you see. So it has a couple of little cuts in it that should help kind of manage water a little bit and just move it around, but nothing that truly tries to evacuate water. But the good news is that means that all four of these strips of rubber are completely solid. Nothing is broken up to where it could cause any looseness or like vagueness in your steering and handling. And it's something that should give you a lot of really good grip. Now the last one we'll look at is the Extreme Contact Force. And this is the one that I just started running this year. And uh, I think the design is a little bit of a mix of both. So we've got that solid strip of rubber down the middle and we've got the sipes on the edges, but they don't actually touch off on the middle. It doesn't completely section off the side shoulders of your tire. It starts in the middle a little bit and then extends to the edge. So the good news is this kind of gives a mix of the best of both worlds. It won't give you the best water evacuation, but it does give you some and it still keeps those outer shoulders solid so that again, you can minimize any numbness or vagueness in your driving characteristics. Now let's go ahead and talk about my actual experience with them. You know, the tread can tell us a lot, but how they actually perform is really what matters. I will say that in the dry, the best performance I got was the RE71 RS. I don't think that should be a surprise. These have been, you know, kind of class leading tires for a very long time. And these new RSs in my experience have been no different. I actually ran them on a thinner tire setup on my car because at the time I was running them on OEM wheels. And even at that aspect, I felt that it matched or performed better 
than the RS4s and the Continental Extreme Contact Forces. So for me, I feel like that's probably the grippiest tire out of the bunch when you've got dry conditions, they warm up quickly and they just stick really, really well. So I definitely think these are the best performing tires here. Next from there, I would say the RS4s are a little bit below. It takes a little more heat for them to warm up. Normally just driving them around town, I can get them hot or just you know maybe doing half a lap. But once they get warm, they perform very well. They don't have as much outright grip as the RE71s, but they do still perform as expected, much better than a typical summer tire. And from you know the shoulders of the tire, they don't feel like they roll over. I don't feel any weird characteristics while I'm driving. I just think that it's a good all around tire. Then last up is the Extreme Contact Force. And this was the one that I was kind of disappointed in. In the dry, it still took a little while for the tires to warm up. I remember when I first put them on the car, I thought something was wrong. I actually went and retorqued my wheels because I thought that maybe my lug nuts were coming loose or something like that. But it was just the tires that they were cold. And that's kind of been a characteristic that I've noticed on and off the track. On the track, it definitely took a full lap or maybe a little bit more for them to really come on to have the grip that you expect. And when doing street driving, it's almost impossible. There are some really aggressive driving techniques that you can use to try to warm them up, but that's not something that I would typically do on a daily drive. So again, that was a little bit disappointing. Once they were up to temp, they performed as I expected, but it took a lot to get them to stick. So that's just something that I would keep in mind if you're considering going that route. Now in the wet, I feel like the best performing tire here is the RS4. Again, that shouldn't be a surprise based on the design, but driving it around town, I noticed no issues, especially when they were new or about like midway down their wear pattern. But once they got low, as most tires in this category are, they began to get a little bit sketchy. And I did find myself in a situation where, you know, they drove as normal dry, they still had a little bit of tread left, and I found myself in a storm and the car was getting a little bit loose. So, so there's something to keep in mind, you know, if you're really concerned about driving in inclement weather, you'll probably either want to drive another car, switch your tires, or just run a different tire. But otherwise, I think they perform really great and probably the best out of these pack. Now the next up from there, I think, is the Continental Extreme Contact Force. Even though it takes a little bit to warm up, like I said, when you're driving in the rain, it does give you a little more confidence, especially at low to medium speeds. I really had no issues. Once I got on the highway, it felt like you know it was a little more vague, even when the tires were relatively new, but it was not as bad as like running a radial or something. So I still made it work, but not something that I would do on purpose. Then the last up from there is definitely the RE71s. You guys can see some of my track day videos I showed driving it in the wet, and those tires were brand new at that track day, and I was still getting vagueness, especially above certain speeds. It just did not give a lot of confidence. It was okay, and you were able to manage it if you really focused on your driving, but not something that I would want to do again. And especially if you ran into standing water, it's something that would just pretty much completely lose traction. So that's not what they were designed for as we can see in the tread and in my experience, it did not perform very well. Now, lastly, I wanna talk about cold performance and in more particular, how quickly they warm up. And again, the RE71 is like bar none here. It's pretty much the quickest warming tire. It sticks really well. And even when you drive it in like 50 degree weather or so, it still has really good confidence. Driving it out of your neighborhood seems to be enough to get it to warm up. And once you get on the highway, it's exactly what you would expect. After that, I think the RS4 would be next. It does take a little bit more to warm up, but again, you can do that pretty much normal city driving and going on the street. And then after maybe 10 minutes or so, you'll be able to get the grip that you're looking for. Then last on this list is definitely the Extreme Contact Force. This is one, again, it just takes a really long time to warm up. I felt like I couldn't warm it up in certain conditions. You really just have to push the car and do things that are not appropriate on the street to get it to stick the way that you would want a 200 tread wear tire to stick. So for that, I would definitely say avoid these tires if you plan on daily driving them or driving them in conditions that are less than like 60 degrees or so. Otherwise, they perform just fine on track. Next, we'll talk about noise. And I think that this isn't a huge deal. If you're getting into a tire in this category, you understand that there's going to be a little more noise. They're stickier, which means they're gonna have more friction, more you know rolling resistance, and you're going to hear that feedback in the car. 
The loudest one in my experience was the RS4, and I think it's because of all the cuts and everything that are in the tire, you're able to get that feedback and you can hear it, especially in the back. I was running a wider rear tire and you could hear it kind of humming when you got up to highway speed. So just something to consider. After that, I think the Continental and the Bridgestones were about comparable. A little more noise than you would get from a typical summer tire, but nothing overwhelming by any means. Next, let's talk about wear. And I think the RE71 RS is definitely at the bottom of the list here. It's typical in comparison to the old RE71R. These new RSs also wear very quickly. And it's kind of unfortunate because they have so much grip. You know, you really want them to last, but they just don't. And so it's one of those things where if you're going to be driving multiple events a year, you'll probably need to plan on multiple sets of tires just to make sure that you can get through the season. So just keep that in mind. On the other hand, I think the RS4 and the Extreme Contact Force are relatively similar. I haven't actually burnt through a set of Extreme Contacts yet, but just based on my track mileage and my road use, it's pretty comparable to what I experienced on my RS4s. It wears very gradually. It holds up very well on the track if you're not doing anything crazy, and it's just a good value tire from that perspective. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about is the price, and this is probably the main reason why I went with the Extreme Contacts, because you're able to get them for so cheap. I was actually able to get them for buy three, get one free, so I basically got 25% off when I bought them last year, and that was a deal I just couldn't pass up. All of these tires are like over $1,200 or $1,300. I've basically spent $3,500 plus just testing all three of these out. And that's not something I really want to do. You know, hopefully this video will help you guys avoid that kind of expense. But, you know, if it's something that you know you're just going to be burning through with track days and stuff, you want to get a good value tire. And that's where I feel like the Extreme Contact Force really shines. You know, it's an extremely good value, especially if you're able to get it through those seasonal discounts. It's impossible to beat. So that's the, where I think that you're going to get the cheapest tire. The Bridgestones and the Handcooks are about the same price. The only downside is one, the Handcooks are not seemingly available in very many sizes. I've seen that slowly dwindling. If you check Tire Rack, they just don't have that many sizes available anymore. So that can be kind of annoying. And the RE71s typically go out of stock early in the season. A lot of people buy their tires around March or April, and then it's hard to get them until they kind of restock later in the year. So both of those, a little more expensive, a little harder to get, or may or may not have them in your size, and something that you need to plan out a little bit more, whereas the Continentals are a little bit easier to get access to, a little bit cheaper to get, and you know it's just going to be a better value throughout the year. But yeah, I think overall, all of the tires are really good and each one has their place. Like I said, I'm driving the Extreme Continentals for the value just so I can get the best bang for my buck. I'm not racing for you know money or any kind of credibility. I just do HPDEs and stuff. So for me, that's worth it. If you want the best absolute performance, definitely go with the RE71 RSs. Those are kind of more designed for autocross, so I think that's a part of the reason why they warm up so quickly, and they just have so much grip. The only downside is they wear quick, so you'll probably need multiple sets depending on how many days you track a year, but otherwise it's going to give you the best performance possible. And then the RS4, I think, is just the perfect combination. I think when you're driving on the street, it drives well. On the track, it drives well and wears well. It's a little bit more expensive, but you're paying for that capability to have a good tire that will last you a while and perform well in both scenarios. So again, all great tires. Let me know if you guys have tried any of them or if you have any thoughts or feedback yourself. Or maybe there are some other 200 Treadwear tires that you think I should try. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this video. So thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.